G'day, I'm Peter Sesselman. Uh, today I'm going to show you very quickly how you can uh, make your own stomp box using one of my DIY transducers that you can buy on my website. So this is ready to go. Just glue it on and plug it in and it plays. Now, if you're watching this, um, this video, you, you probably have seen some of the other videos uh, around about how to make stomp boxes and a lot of them use little piezo discs. Don't waste your time, it doesn't work. Uh, piezos are great for amplifying what they're attached to, um, but no good for um, a stomp box sound because generally that's not the sound you're after. You want a big bass drum type of sound and you won't get that with the piezo attached to a little box. You will get a little box louder, that's all. So having said that, um, what I have here today is I have a cigar box. Uh, so this was a really bad sounding stomp box once upon a time, it was given to me by a friend of mine. Um, I went to a junk shop and I picked up this little um, case. Not quite sure what it was for. It must have had something in it, maybe something valuable, a medallion or something like that. But it's a little wooden case. And I reckon you can stick a transducer in there and turn that into a little functional stomp box. I also found this little, this little uh, dish wheelbarrow thing. <laughs> I imagine a very small farmer might have used this to get a little heap of peas or something like that going to the market. Or maybe it's just a decorative piece, who knows. But I'm planning to take the, uh, the, the wheelbarrow part of it and, and just use the, uh, the wooden dish uh, sitting upside down like that, stomping on the side. I reckon it could be quite comfortable to play. So, um, I'm going to take you through step by step how we do this. Uh, there's a couple of things to keep in mind and I'll, um, I'll show you those as we go along. Basically what we need to do is we need to install the, the transducer into the unit and we need to somewhere or another get that jack plug through the side and then um, a little bit of rubber or something to stop it skidding around and to give it a bit of bounce. Um, because that's an important thing with these uh, transducers is that they are not, they're a transducer first and foremost and the microphone second. So yes, when you do attach it to a, a box, some of those wooden tones will get picked up by the unit and come through the speaker, which I think is nice because you can, you can get some of those nice overtones in there. But the bass frequencies, they are produced inside the actual transducer and they're produced by the transducer being allowed to move a little bit when you stomp on it. So it's like an inertia thing. So in order for it to do that, there has to be a little bit of give in the unit. If it's just sitting hard down onto a concrete floor, a wooden box and you're stomping on it, unless it's given the lid, um, you won't get any bass frequency. So it has to have rubber feet or it has to have a, a lid or a surface that can bend a little bit under each stomp. It, we're only talking about one or two millimeters that it has to move when you're stomping on it. Uh, I often use a little bit of carpet underneath my stomp boxes. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind uh, when we make this. When, when, when you buy this DIY uh, unit on my website, it does come with a little information leaflet thing on how to install it and, and what to be aware of so to get the best sound out of it. Now, without further ado, I think we should start um, making some stomp boxes. What do you reckon? Let's do it. So first I'm going to... Um, take the wheelbarrow attachment of this. Now, as you can see, this, this bowl has a curved surface inside, which means this is not really going to stick all that well to it. And also, I think it does, it does actually clear, but um, it would be good to recess it a little bit. So I'm going to put it in there, and I'm just going to draw, draw around it roughly. So that we can uh, we can give it a flat surface in there. So that's that one ready to go into the workshop. This bit, this bit I'm just going to hear hoy. This box here has some padding inside and bits and pieces which I would um, I would take out because they're just adding extra bulk. It's not necessary. So here's some me stuff. So yeah, just a question of ripping it out. So that's that. That's in the bin. And the 
bottom of it, there's some stuff too. So the question is, will this fit inside? Just, it just clears. Again, I might actually take a little bit. I'll just clean out the bottom a little bit. So I'm just gonna draw around it. Like that. Now, one thing you'll, you'll realize is that uh, these kind of chassis jacks how they're going to fit through the side of the unit. Well, I'll show you a little trick for that later on. Um, okay, so the cigar box is probably... Yeah, I reckon we'll, we'll get away with this just as it is. It's not going to require much modification, if anything. It's got a little bit of give in it. I think the lid's going to be a little tight, um, but that's not going to cause any problems. Um, it already has a hole there that the jack plug goes through. Although I must say that that hole was really badly made. But for the point of this exercise, I'm just going to reuse the same hole. So uh, that one's not going to need much. So I'm going to leave that here. These two are going to need uh, drilling. I'll bring one unit with me, and we'll go into the into the workshop and we'll. Uh, play with the machines a little bit. So in order to make room for the transducers inside those uh, boxes that we have to work with, I'm going to use this um, auger router style bit. I'm going to put that in my overhead drill here. Basically, I'm drilling holes to create a flat surface, seeing that this bowl is actually rounded. Yeah, so now we've, we've managed to make a, a, a bit of a flat surface for the, um, for the transducer to be glued down on and that seems to sit nicely in there. So, yeah, it's ready to, to do that. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to somehow or another get this through the side there. I'm going to put it on a slight angle so the jack plug will be kind of slightly up a little bit when you plug it in. Um, so, let's see how we do that. Uh, for this I'm going to use a, um, a chisel or a spade auger. Uh, you can see this one's been modified slightly, but that shouldn't matter too much. You can use a normal one as well. So this is a 22 mil. Uh, that's a good size for the jack plug. So here I'm just gonna clamp a block onto here. So you can see here now that I've clamped, I've got a wooden block that I clamped onto my, my table. And then I'll clamp this on to the wooden block as best I can. Then I'm going to position this uh, like that. 
see here we've got a, a recess there. The jack plug should fit nicely in there. Yep, it's perfect. And we probably want to meet it up from the back. That looks pretty good. So that's that one done. Now, uh, next one is this gift case thing. So again, so again, we need to drill a hole for the for the jack plug. So in order to do that, I'm going to put the plug at the end here. So I'm going to clamp it onto my piece of wood here. So again, I'm going to recess a hole so that the jack plug will go through. I can see there the jack plug is installed in the side of the unit. Now all we have to do now is glue this on in there with the double sided tape. So the tape is ready to be stuck on. Let's just put this in there, press down. Hey presto, the unit's in place. We may just have to tuck the cable down a little bit with some tape. Like that. So with this, this box here, very much the same story. Just gonna put the jack plug in, screw the transducer onto the lid, and we're almost done. You can see now the jack plug is in there. I'm just going to glue this onto the lid. Tell you what, the, the trickiest part of the whole process is, um, is getting, getting this uh, plastic off the double-sided tape. It is so fiddly. I don't know why, but I just, oh. If anybody's got a really good idea on how to get the protective coating off the back of the double-sided tape, then please put a comment, because this is really fiddly. There, one. <laughs> oh, that one was a little easier. So, again, I'm thinking we've got to make sure we leave room for the plug there. Don't put it too close up here or they won't fit together. So, I'm going to put this just back. Oops. I'm just going to put it around there, I'm thinking. Just in there. So push it down a bit, make the double sided tape stick. Put the cable out of the way. Close the box up. There you go, it's another stomp box. So we'll put we'll do a double sided there. Put a double sided there. Thank you. 
Okay. Now with this with this bowl thing, I'd like to put a, a lid on the bottom just to protect the insides and to some way to stick the the non-skid rubber and stuff like that. So I had a little bit of a look around the on the workshop and what I have is I got this, this sheet of um, ABS plastic here that I use for some of the moldings and things like that. Now you may not have one of those floating around, but uh, don't do not despair. You could use uh, a bit of plywood or, or anything really. This just happened to be what I had laying around. So first of all I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna draw on the outside. Okay so I cut out a, a rough disc or plastic. I'm gonna glue it to the surface. I'm just gonna use um, I'm just gonna use hot glue for this because um, this is just a demonstration. I'm probably never gonna use that stuff, this stump box. It's, it's just to show you how it's done. So put a nice bead of, of hot glue. Now while that glue cools down, um, you know these transducers can be can be put into any kind of box, anything you find. Uh, see, this is just a wooden bowl, this is a cigar box, which is a common thing for people to choose. It's a little, little uh, case for something or another. You could also actually stick the transducer inside your guitar case somewhere where it's not in the way for the guitar, and put the plug through the side, and it saves carrying another box around. Basically, if you're busking, for instance, you know you just put your guitar case on the ground and stomp on it and plug it into your amp. That sound great. So um, it's only limited by your imagination, really, what you want to make a stomp box out of. Now, if you don't want to make your own stomp box, but you want the sound and the convenience of playing well, then go to my website. There's heaps of beautiful um, already made stomp boxes there and timber and, and the puck and stomp by with the rubber and all that type of thing, all the di different kind of configurations. So uh, you don't have to build it yourself. Uh, this is just for those people who kind of get a kick out of making stuff, you know, like, like me. <laughs> so I'm going to clean up the edge of this one. Let's see, uh, the glue is setting now because it's cooling fairly quickly. You can see it's a bit rough around the edge. I'm just going to clean that up on the belt sander. So um, if you come along, I'll show you. You can see here now, the edge is a bit smoother and nicer, so... I mean, if you want to be really fancy, you could paint something beautiful on here, or you could sand it back and varnish it up beautifully, and maybe a little pearl inlay or something like that. It's up to you. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, foam rubber non-skid feet on them, partially because they need that little bit of movement, and also to stop them skidding around. So, let me see. So this is a uh, closed cell foam. What that means is that it, it, um, the, the bubbles in the rubber are closed, not open. So it just springs back again quite readily. and doesn't just squish down and stay down, it bounces back up. So again I'm going to use double sided tape, but I'm going to use this wide craft tape that I have. So I'm going to just put that onto the foam. You can get uh, this kind of foam already with um, with glue on the back, I think so. But I just happen to have this in the workshop, so I might as well use this. Okay, so then we'll trim this a little bit. Like yay. Okay, I'm just going to put four, four little strips. On this one. Let's see. Sides like that. 
on. Okay, so I just four little uh, bits of uh, carousel rubber. That'll stop it skidding around too much. Also, when you stomp on it, it gives that little bit of movement, which is so important. That's that one. This one here, uh, I'm going to put just on the top there. So the, the unit kind of rocks a little bit like that. I'm not, not going to put anything at the back. You can if you want to. It's just um, what I'm deciding to do right now. There. Rub the foot there. So now that it sits like that, it rocks a little bit on the toe there. This one here, I'm going to do the same type of thing, just two, two on the top there. But look, if you want to put four on, that would be perfectly okay as well. So I'm gonna plug them in and see how they work, but I'll also I'll take them up to the to the music studio and I'll do a proper demo um, in a tick. But for now I'm just gonna plug them in, and make sure that they they function. There's no reason why they wouldn't, but hey, go check. Nothing wrong with that. Pretty good too. Now the old box. Yep. All sounds pretty good. So as I said, I'm gonna take them up to the to the studio and give them a bit of a go with the guitar, a bit of fun with them. But that's basically it. I mean we've um, we've made three stone boxes. So not really all that complicated. <laughs> I'll catch up at the studio. Okay, so that's it. Quick little demo. Um, yeah, you can buy this uh, DIY uh, transducers on my website, and I said the little boxes and bits and pieces you can find all over the place. You may even have some at home in the cupboard, or just drop into a junk shop or a second-hand shop, and you'll find something you can stick them in. 
Um, lots of fun. Sounds great. Um, catch you later. Cheers. <laughs>